Hello and welcome to another episode of Inside the Barrel. Uh, today's episode is a pint where it's a small bite size or drinkable uh, look into service now for or from admins and developers, a day in the life of, if you will. Uh, I'm joined by my co-host Dorian and we're going to walk through Integration Hub uh, importing Excel files. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, yeah, so maybe uh, talk a little bit about right before we go into what's the use case or where do you find this most common? Uh, so for me, not very. <laughs> right. I don't, I, as a portal developer, I don't think I've ever, you know, used Integration Hub. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't have a good use case for it. I mean, I, I would assume it's, well, I don't even know because you can do the same through just your you know, uh, your importing mm -hmm. data, right? So, so I'll, I'll give I, you I the don't... use case. I think if you Perfect. enable like uh, citizen developers or you want okay. other people that have a, like a little application that they have to themselves, um, mm -hmm. you, you may want to import records uh, from another system or from an old tool that they have into at least, you know, some sort of uh, uh, table. Um, I think it's also very common, like when you're you're migrating instances or from old tools. That's probably the most common use case that I see for uh, importing. So, okay. And what's what's the value over just a data import through the old mechanism? I think it's the ease of use, right? To to do it the old way, it requires you to know a lot about the table structures and service now, like. The, this one's built on the new now uh, uh, now framework or the next framework, and so it should uh, be easier for potentially admins to to go through these steps once um, once they know it. And I think that's probably the the biggest benefit there. Okay. Trying. Cool. So I'll bring up your screen share and you walk us through. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so. Like I mentioned, I don't use Integration Hub. The first time I really experienced it was when we decided to do this and you were like, hey, go build one. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. So it it isn't uh, terribly difficult. I will say that it's um, pretty easy. There is a caveat, and I'll show it here in a minute, on what I didn't like about it um, mm -hmm. as opposed to maybe the older data import uh, process um, that okay. is, is also got its own pros and cons. This <laughs> one, you know, this one definitely is easier because it was pretty simple. You know, you create a new integration um, and it, it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, so like you were saying, import old records. Uh, I don't know why I have to do both. <laughs> Being more uh, robust. Robust? <laughs> or verbose? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, you can so find a source type. Together. I, there's only one source type, and I don't know, is that normal that there's only one? There's not any other way to do this? Uh, no, so other source types in the future, uh, like when you have some of the plugins that are installed or the package for Integration okay. Hub would show up there. Um, so. Um, right now, it's the, the, the baseline just shows uh, Excel or flat files. Perfect. And that's and that's what I did. So to set this up, I went to the incident table and just grabbed the template, just to make my life so mm -hmm. much easier and, and gave it three rows in the in the Excel file. And so what I can do here is go grab and I know you guys can't see this, but I'm going to grab my. Excel file, if I can find it here. Uh, there, is that the right one? I think this is the right one. All right, so I've got this uploaded. Um, this button shows up, so I'm assuming I should click this one to get the structure set up. <laughs> yeah, and is there anything under configuration that you may want to highlight? Like, because I think it talks about like your headers row and your sheet number. So, um, I think, so. well, you know, by default, I think it works correctly, zero and mm -hmm. zero. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's even considering there's that first sheet in 
the uh, the template that you get, mm -hmm. but it still seems to work correctly because it does get the um, all the columns right from that spreadsheet. Yeah, and, and I found uh, like if I wanted to import like four or five, like coming back to here to then change that number every time and just going back and forth, I was able to do. So if you do have multiple sheets, like you go through one import first, then you come back to here and then you just change the sheet number and then you just, you know, rinse and repeat that. Um, okay. A little, not not the most intuitive part of it, but it is possible to support multiple yeah. sheets. Yeah, I, I wonder if in the future they'll ever allow, you know, like when you go to print something that says pages one through whatever, mm -hmm. I wonder if, if, if ever in the future they'll give the option to do a, a, a sheet number through. So like zero yeah. through 10. Yeah. You know, so you don't have to keep coming back and repeating if everything's the same. Yep. All right. So we've got our structure. <laughs> Feature release for service now. Um, and so, and, and you can see that now this map to target lights up, right? So mm -hmm. we can click on that guy and add, and, and then we'll do add a mapping. Now this is where. Uh, so, so the first thing I notice here is some, there was no way to create the new table, right? Like, let's say you're importing into a new table. Yes. The mm -hmm. table has to exist, so you still have to do something outside. Um, yeah. And these checkboxes should look familiar to people on, uh, you know, whether to run business rules or not. It's interesting because ServiceNow recommends that you don't run business rules when you're importing, but yet they, they default they -check. <laughs> to checking it. So you'll I know, see some, well, yeah. go ahead. No, I was going to say see in documentation, right? So, <laughs> right, yeah. Because I was thinking about this, and if if we go back to the other video we did about time card data, right? Mm -hmm. um, time card, uh, the table has a number of business rules that run when you import, mm -hmm. and some of them are very strict, like uh, some of the date ones, making sure mm -hmm. the dates are correct. And it, when you know you're going to run into stuff like that, yeah, definitely uncheck that. Don't run the business rules and mm -hmm. so forth. But I think this one's pretty benign. I like, you know, we're running straight from a template right in. Okay. So the data should be pretty stable, right? You, I'm not expecting any issues. Um, so we can just go ahead and leave that. We'll save it and then and we'll for, get. For most people, yeah. they may have uh, asked the question, well, what about staging tables? Like how does that work in this new paradigm? And behind the scenes, ServiceNow is still creating those staging tables for you. Um, you just don't have to worry about it as much. So something for, for people. So, so it's all magic. Yeah. And yeah. For, for like developers, magic can be a little scary because you, you don't have that control. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you, you can get a little nervous about that. All right. So we have a map um, and we'll go in here. Now, this is where I got irritated yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing this. Um, these are not in any sort of order. They don't match <laughs> side to side in order, in, in whatever order they're in. Mm -hmm. And so, and and I don't, I couldn't figure out. Like, there's not a way to sort them at all, or even yeah. search for them. And so, yeah. And so, I know the the columns that I'm after because I only filled out a few of them. But um, trying to find them really was was my problem, right? So we're after let's do open, right? Uh, so first we got to go through here and find opened. And we had a, a question. You know, they've changed the convention of coalesced to match instead. So something also oh, okay. for people to to keep in mind. I I thought that's what that was i just did I, I don't have anything that i was working off of to coalesce or match. yeah 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 and so I, I didn't bother with it but i thought that's what that that what they were after with that and i wonder why they changed to match probably a simpler term to understand because you're matching on that column yeah coalesce is a very technical term so yeah yeah Thank all right you. i was looking for opened right <laughs> see i hit the bottom and i didn't see it oh it's right there oh oh Oh, right there. Okay, so now what you got to do is find it over here <laughs> because they're not, again, they're not in the same order on yeah. both columns, right? Yeah. Um, 
And so. Oh boy. Yeah, exactly. It is <laughs> so frustrating. I, there we go. Uh, open. There we go. So we just drag it over and that's, and that's basically, and, and I, you know, there's other things you can do here, but for, you know, for baseline ease of use, you just dragging things over. So the, adding them. The one that I use the, the most is the trim. So if you want to just show that on the FX, so if you ever have data and you may have copied and pasted it from somewhere um, and it's mm -hmm. string, using the trim one is really, really nice so that it does, it removes the, the white space at the, at the end. Um, yeah. So that can, that can help a lot when you're having to actually do a match on a string, you may want to yeah. just make sure that it doesn't have that. So, yeah. And I guess this replaces, or this is the equivalent of some of the uh, transform scripts, right? Because you would end up. Yes, you would have to write a script to do out, that. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. and this is similar to the concept in Flow Designer. Um, mm -hmm. So, Flow Designer has these. So, you may we may see more and more of these being built as yeah. we go. Cool. All right. I'm going to go back to the, because I already have one done. Okay. Um, because I, it drives me so batty trying to find those things. <laughs> so um, I, I've already, it should be in here, uh, the ones that I've done. So yeah, so you can see the things that have come over and um, we know we're good there. So we would, we would get a save, we'll click on save and then we can do the, the schedule imports. Um, you can see I already ran one, but I deleted those records. And uh, we should be able to run the import again. So let's let's look at incidents currently because they should not be there. We also had a comment on uh, the other use of the functions is the date and time one. So mm -hmm. sometimes the date and time may be in an Excel that's different than what you're importing. So definitely transforms are useful there. Uh, and that, you know, that's probably a good thing to understand because in the template, the dates get converted automatically. Like I was mm -hmm. putting them in year, month, day, and they mm -hmm. would flip over to a more common, you know, month, mm -hmm. day, year, but they'd still, mm -hmm. they still go in correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I wonder if, uh, it may be for like UTC time conversions, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go to on the left, date and time, yeah, convert to date. So it looks like there is some flexibility. So yeah. Oh, oh, I guess it's maybe your field. It may, it may not, it may be fine in this one, but you may have you know custom um fields that that record date and you may just want it in a super uh specific yeah. format yeah no that is a good a good thing to know okay we're going to go over here and run and uh run the import and so let's so, talk about this right because uh, this screen it looks a little different on the, it would look it, a little different it, it is different because it, the old method you would get you know especially on a big job you would it would cycle through and say this many's done this many's done this many's done and there were steps you'd have to walk through to, to get to your finality, right? You'd have to go through the trans, uh, I don't remember them all off the top of my head, but you import and then you transform and then you can view it. Yeah, Where this, yeah. this it doesn't, it doesn't give you any of that. It just, it, once you're done, you're done. So when yep. you see that it's, it's run successfully, um, then you get it. Okay. So I am. And, and it's also interesting on, so if you're normally doing a flat file, it makes the most sense to do, just have the scheduled job do a schedule once. But with other integrations, let's say there's like a REST API that you want to call, you know, every day, like you would then, you know, potentially create a scheduled job that runs it every day and does that transform. So in mm -hmm. most cases, at flat files, you'll use the schedule once that John was showing. So yeah, you're just, you know, creating a, a, an import here. And this looks pretty similar to anyone that has done a scheduled data import. Yeah. Um, but for, for other ones, uh, you, there may be other use cases. Yeah. So yeah, continue now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the last one created was in January. So now if I refresh, I should get three new ones. Yep. 
that nice. were put in today. <clears throat> yeah. Awesome. But, uh, so that's, I mean, really that's the ease of use on that one. Uh, I, I still so, think. So I guess my question here is other than the, the mapping sorting issue, which hopefully yeah. ServiceNow can solve the time, the amount of time and expertise you would need to do a simple import seems a lot like, uh, uh, a lot quicker in this new, this new method. Well, it's definitely a lot easier. So, and, and I, and I want to ask you that um, if you're setting this up for non-admins to use, mm -hmm. um, it probably becomes even easier because they're going to be trimmed to only see the tables they're allowed to see. So in that first part where you're setting up the, um, I want to say it's probably in the map to target when you're, when you're, um, choosing the table yeah mm -hmm. they're they're only going to see those those tables the, the only other issue is if they have you know if that table has to be created first so there's still some some uh requirement on the admin to, to prep things if you will mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that really it's like here you go just i i guess the other issue is there's not a lot of like how do you know i don't necessarily know the steps i'm supposed to follow mm -hmm. Um, I yeah. only knew it because I'm used to the old way of doing it and I could kind of guess what I'm supposed to do. And it's, it doesn't go like, okay, well, add your source. Now that you're done with that, click on map to target. You know, people may miss that, that, that link lights up that you can do something now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it, I guess it's just not very conducive to, um, you know, what do I do next? I guess type thing. Yeah. So I, I agree. I think there's more of like a guided experience and I'm not talking about like guided setup, but just like a really, there's opportunity here, I think in the future, because this is now built on the next framework to do more like, you know, I'll say like jazzy, like, Hey, you see, you noticed this, <laughs> like, boom, like, do you want to do this next? Right. And I, I think so too. I think, I think they could implement a better experience that mm -hmm. would that would help those very low code users do something. Um, yeah. Because if, if they're really going towards, I guess, the citizen developer, not every person is gonna, gonna know how to, to run through everything right off. I mean, obviously, yeah. currently you could, you could put together a little sheet um, when you send the email saying, hey, you can now go do this, here are the steps to follow. But I yeah. would like to see it built in the other thing that's a little scary here is like an approval workflow, right? Like no approval workflow. I mean, like there's no easy way to roll back. So once you go one way, like you now Records have an are there. Well, you know, it. you could set up a staging table, you know, as the admin, you could set up a staging table that they, that they're going to import into. And, and then, then, you know, have extra work workflow. on flow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I'd probably still rather. I, I I think the the record producer method is a little better because you can mm -hmm. really you can really uh, handle that sort of stuff. I think this is more like it's it, you, there's not a lot of worry. Like you mm -hmm. you've given it to your developer or your citizen developer to uh, import data, but the data has been has been, you know, uh, normalized and it's very safe and you're not yeah. concerned about problems. Um, I think if, if you're giving it to like complete, complete non-developer people, then I would do the record producer because you can really control it there. Yeah. I think the other worry that I actually have of, of this, and I don't know if you ran into this, but um, it creates a lot of records in update sets. Like, yeah. So if you went to your update set, even if it was in default, um, you'll see that like when you're playing around with it, trying to do the mappings and then you go to the next screen and then you go back, it's generating tons of, uh, tons of records there. So I think it's probably in your default global, I guess. And if you sort by created, you'll just, yeah, you'll see like tons of things in here. <laughs> um, 
and it's not that it's bad it's just that like you need to remember that you need to be in an update set if you want to move this to the next environment um and and if you're you know creating and deleting things like it's just going to add more right so yeah it just it keeps going uh so it created 156 records in the updates <laughs> That it actually created more. I think I saw if you went past, I, you probably did some work on some widgets, but after that, there was even more on like, because it has to create the staging table. It has to do well, all Well, so I, I just did it for anything after. So that one probably doesn't uh, count either, but this was everything after for today. Yeah. Um, yep. And so 155 records, and, and that wasn't even the complete. You know, because I went back to use the other one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's probably more. So, yeah, I think you're right. If you're going <laughs> to set these up, you better have a, a scope to put them in because you don't want to have to keep track of that out of default. Yeah, exactly. So, but, all right. Any any uh, last thoughts uh, on it, John? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, I think the use case from in my mind or from my point of view is definitely very safe importing you know you're as an admin you're not expecting to have to really um transform data outside of the defaults right i mean sure you can do some trimming or some date checking or whatever but i think it's more like you you know this is going to be a safe import you're not mm -hmm. too concerned what's going to happen to your instance when letting someone use this or you're using it. Um, yeah, I agree. I think, I think the, the simple uh, transforms, this is the way to go. You don't have to write coding um, at all. It's definitely just follow some screens. There is a little yep. like a learning curve, but it's not as big as the learning curve for importing is on, on the other side. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, I think it's the, the step in the right direction um, personally. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I think it's a good, a good, direction to go to mm -hmm. enable non-code users or non-developer users to do mm -hmm. things um it just needs you know it definitely needs to mature a little bit more yeah awesome all right well uh, if you liked our content keep giving us ideas on yeah. uh, things you want us to show we have a really exciting episode already planned for next week mm -hmm. um so uh, john and i are really excited to talk about it <laughs> and <laughs> And so stay tuned, we'll, we'll schedule it soon. And uh, so any of you guys can like, remind, subscribe, tell your friends, uh, or just reach out to us, we're on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, we'll see you guys. <laughs>